<laughs> so, and this is hilarious. This is the Ministry of Silly Walks. And I'm trying to fit the, the head train. And it's kind of it's kind of hard, to be honest. But we're getting there. Hey, hey, hey. Today we're going to have a look at character design. Because there's been a new release of a new extension that works together with the brand new control net. And it basically gives you control inside Stable Fusion to edit any pose. Let's check that out. By the way, on the subject of poses, I didn't believe yoga would correct my posture, but uh, I stand corrected. Now all the links are going to be in the description below. And this you might recognize if you've been using ControlNet, but this is not just a model based out of an image. Now you can actually click and drag these and I'm going to show you. You're just going to take this link here, copy paste that, put that into your extensions in Stable Fusion Automatic 11.11, install from URL, copy paste that in there, install, and then apply and restart your UI. Now you should see the open pose editor up here and if you don't see it, just restart everything. And as you can see here, you can click the joints here, which is here's the knee joint. You can move these. So these are the arms and try a pose here and get the leg up, maybe something like this. Maybe we're gonna raise the arm like so. Get that down a little bit. And get this out a little bit. All right, cool. Now we're gonna take this and you might be inclined to press the big orange add button here, but that's not what you're gonna do. That's just gonna add another one of these. You wanna send this to control net. And if you don't have control net, check my, one of my previous videos on how to install that. So now you can see we got this into the control net. We're gonna enable, select the model here, open pose. Now you don't need to use the preprocessor because if you do, then ControlNet is gonna think of this as an image of a person and try to extract what we already have. So we were saying, okay, we have this and uh, process it with, with the actual model, not the preprocessor. And something that we'll learn lately is that this is not necessary. This is for creating the blank canvas. So you don't need to adapt these settings when it comes to the ones up here. So I'm gonna load one of my Healy styles here. And then I'm gonna take woman astronaut dancing. Select this, control arrow up, just to get it a little more weight. And I'm gonna start with the uh, Euler A and uh, well, 25 is K, just to get some uh, good images out of this. I'm gonna try four to start. And as you can see here in all of our images, we are getting the same pose. If you've seen control net videos before, this doesn't come as a surprise to you, obviously, but the fact that you can just go in here and say, okay, this is not the exact pose I want. Let's say, okay, we want the arm out a little bit more. Let's go back into open pose editor, take that arm. Let's get it, let's find the right one, that one, get it out there. Maybe we wanna let's say, okay, we want the foot back down and send that to control net. And now we can try again. It's just a two for this. And now you quickly change the pose. And both of these are actually pretty good images. Now they need some upscaling and inpainting, of course, but uh, just from a quick, quick draft. And as always with um, control net, you can keep the input and just change the prompt here. So let's say ancient Roman warrior. And here we have our ancient Roman warriors. And our first step here, you know, with the faces, it's um, pretty poor. But you get the general gist of the tool and, and how it performs. So let me show you what I would do to make these better. Let's say I want to improve on this one. So I'm going to send that to image to image. I'm going to keep everything here. And then I'm going to change it to SDA Keras. I'm going to up the steps. Some people say a 40 is a little high, but I like the consistency that we're getting with it. I'm going to double this. And I'm going to run, let's say, four images this time and uh, denoising strength. If you don't know what denoising strength is, it means that one, you will change everything in the image, zero will change nothing in the image. So the higher the value, the more we change, or the lower the value, the more we save. And I'm not going to use control net here for this image. Now we're taking our base composition and upscaling it in a way that it gives AI more freedom to improve on the image. As you can see in the left one here, the hand is terrible, the face is really bad, 
and I don't know how the, he's actually holding the shield. That is improving much in this image. Now, this particular image, maybe the shield is a little far out, but uh, in general, the image is much, much better. So let's have a quick look at these. And I actually think that the first one we got here is uh, was pretty good. So let's improve on that one. Now you can upscale at this step, and uh, sometimes I do, but for this one, we're just gonna send it to InPaint. Now, one negative part about sending it to upscale first is that the in-painted parts that you do will be higher resolution or higher detail than the rest of the image. So consider that when you're uh, improving on your image. Now we're improving here and then upscaling later. That will make the image a little more coherent in detail. So I'm thinking we are going to want to change the head and the face here. So I'm just changing the prompt here, Ancient Roman Warrior head and helmet. And we already have a lot of the image, so I'm going to lower this to 0.5. And then make sure in a previous version, it said in paint at full resolution or, or something like that. Uh, now this is the latest version and this is in paint area and you want to press only masked here. Now you can in paint the whole picture. You will still in paint just this part, but it will keep the same resolution and detail. Only masked will give it better detail here, but it will also differ from the image a little bit. We're going to keep it just for two batches this time. And try again and then we generate and as we lower the denoising strength we're keeping a lot of the original composition or the original image it just gets a little better since we're having far more detail or resolution when we're doing the painting now if you want more changes you're going to need to up the denoising strength let's have a look at these i think the first one's pretty good it's fairly consistent with what we had from the beginning most of the time you might need to work on the hands, but I think it's fairly good, this one. Let me see if he's holding like that, right? That's his left arm up like this. And you're seeing well, he's holding it more like that. So yeah, ish, right? I mean, it's okay. And I think the rest is fairly good, actually. So I'm just gonna send this to extras. Something that I've learned from my friend Helius. I've used ESR Gen and Swin IR a lot, and I've started to use length shells when, when upscaling. Now, he, is, he told me that what if what if you put Swin IR here at number 2, at point 0.1, about point 0.1. And I've started doing that and it's uh, it's pretty good actually. So you get the, a little extra detail from that Swin IR. So here we have our image and what I usually do when I'm happy with what I've been painted, and for this image it's not much, I just changed the face a little bit. Uh, I think the rest looks uh, very good. And what I do is I, I use some final touches in uh, Photoshop or any photo editor. If you want a free one, you can check, just check out Photopea. And then I usually add some curves on that. I want a little more black down here. And raise the light. And sometimes I want to raise up here and that's the, the white parts can see down in the in the dust you can see here how much you can do with that so I'm just gonna raise the that part it's gonna also gonna raise this and this back back here and we are blowing out the sky a little bit it's all white here but that's fine for this particular image you can see the change here from the before after before after not a lot but it's something I mean all these little changes is what changes your image in the end also going to add some vibrance and that way you can add some color to the image without blowing it up like you would with saturation see it's not a lot again before after before after before after and what i usually do then is i make a if you control shift alt e you're going to make a new copy of everything all your layers into a new one and then i go into Filter, sharpen, unsharp mask, and I sharpen it a little bit. So you can see here, it's very subtle. But if you look at the, we can't see the preview, but you can see here. Let's just ra raise it so I'm, you'll see what I'm talking about. So before, after, before, after, before, 
after. And what I want to do is I want, I usually go with 75 and one pixel if it's a small image and two if it's a little bigger. So it's barely noticeable and probably for you guys now with, with the recording on my screen it's fairly big. But uh, I promise you it's there. So this is before and this is after. Before, after. So I add that. At this point you can be fairly happy with your image. If you want to take it further you could add for example some noise and that would make your image feel a little more filmic or uh, well taken from a camera. So you can see before, after, before, after. It's the subtle things. So this was a quick way of showing you open post editor and uh, a couple of extra steps that you can take to improve on your images. Now everyone doesn't have a photo editor, but again I recommend Photopea, which is a free Photoshop online. It's basically a clone. Hey, I hope you learned something today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. See ya.